It's been called the smelliest food in the world. The cans swell up after it's packaged, and that's considered a good thing. We're here to explain why the Swedes love their surströmming. And for that, we called in some experts, courtesy of the Swedish Embassy here in Washington, DC. This is surströmming. And this is the actual Swedish ambassador to the United States. Surströmming. Surströmming. Sour, sour herring, it actually means. And I can now tell you firsthand, it is pretty stinky. I don't really know how to describe the smell. It's very, it's, it's strong. It's very earthy. Can you guys smell it over there? Yeah. <laughs> it's not quite what I expected, I'll say that. I was expecting almost a little bit like poopy diaper from some of the things I've read, but it's not. Like its Northern European cousins, such as Icelandic hakarl and Norwegian rakfisk, surströming was born out of the need to preserve freshly caught fish. You know, it's really part of our cultural heritage. It goes actually back. The, f the oldest piece of like evidence of surströmming uh, dates back 9,000 years. So and I, this is something that was eaten in a lot of cultures. It's a way of preserving food, but it really took off in the 1500s because you know we were at war uh, and salt was very expensive. So people needed to find other ways to ferment or to keep food as you know there were no refrigerators uh, back then. So up until we invented refrigeration, peoples around the world have used a very simple chemical to prevent foods from spoiling, salt. But for most of human history, salt was expensive, and there probably wasn't much to go around, particularly in Northern Europe. So people had to use as little salt as possible. And that leads to some interesting chemistry. There's enough salt in surströmming to prevent most bacteria from growing, the kind that would spoil the food or make you sick or whatever. But certain species of bacteria thrive in high salt, low pH, low oxygen environments. And these guys make surströmming what it is. These bacteria also produce lactic acid. More lactic acid comes from the fish's muscle tissue as it ferments. Lactic acid makes it even more difficult for other bacteria to grow by dropping the pH to levels they can't stand. The bacteria also produce propionic acid, butyric acid, and hydrogen sulfide. Those guys are responsible for the extremely strong smell. Together, they are sharp, pungent, slightly dairy-like, and vinegary. The hydrogen sulfide might be the worst part, as it's also responsible for the odor of flatulence. This is a theme we return to whenever we talk about unusual foods like this. Holding your nose is better than starving. And over time, these foods turn into beloved cultural staples. It's an acquired taste, as they say. I've learned to, to, to eat it. Uh, I don't like it that much, but it's, uh, it's part of our tradition and it's a fun thing to do because it's very, very special. But there are those who really, really love it. So I think it's uh, either you love it or you don't really. Surströmming is fermented for several weeks in its salt and lactic acid brine. Then it's canned in the same liquid it was fermented in, which means it doesn't actually stop fermenting. The bacteria have no source of oxygen, but that doesn't stop them. They keep doing their thing, producing gases as byproducts. That's why the cans swell up over time. Swollen cans of green beans or whatever in the supermarket are a sign of botulinum bacteria and are very, very bad news. Don't ever buy swollen cans. But in surströmming, it's business as usual. So that's, this can is a little bit swollen. It really is under pressure. So why is that? Uh, normally, if I was in the grocery store and I saw a swollen can, I would not, <laughs> I wouldn't buy that. But it, in this case, it's okay. It is okay, yeah. We also been, uh, it's been sitting out for a little bit, so that's what happens. And we're gonna make sure that we do it in a bucket later when we do it, and we're gonna enjoy it with a little bit of aqua weights. They say to open the can underwater because that pressure can cause a bit of a splatter. Also, it smells. Well, let's uh, crack open a can of surströmming. Yes, and as I am the deputy ambassador, I ask uh, the executive chef to do that because you <laughs> really are the professional. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All right, here it goes. Are you ready? <laughs> ready? Yeah, let's do it. There you go. Let's do it. They better, oh, there's a little pop there. They better hope that, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's a little spray of bubbles that we got. See, oh yeah, I can, oh, okay. I can smell it, yep. Oh yeah, it's pretty strong. <laughs> <laughs> pretty strong. Mm, yummy. Oh boy, yeah. <laughs> oh boy. We're, I don't know if we're rinsing this water later. But <laughs> All right, here we are. All right, well here we go, we're in business. 
So let's let's see if we can get a nice, whoo. Yeah, I mean, it looks yeah, like yeah. fish fillets, right? Once the can is open, there's a right and a wrong way to eat surstroming. These boneheads from BuzzFeed a couple years ago demonstrated the wrong way. Luckily, Frida is here to show us how it should be done. Uh, I, we have a wonderful spread in front of us. This is how you would normally serve it. You wouldn't eat it out of the can. So tell us a little bit about what you've got here. Yes, yeah, so we got some potatoes, some boiled potatoes. Uh, we got some creme fraiche. Uh, we got some chives, a little bit of butter, and some red onions. There's nothing wrong with any of that. Uh, nothing, there's nothing that isn't better <laughs> with potatoes. Exactly. And, if you're of age, of course, you've got to round it out with some beer. Or, even better, aquavit. So, what are we going to toast first? We're going to go in for a bite first? So, you're yeah. taking a, we're taking a, here is yours, little oh, piece right here. You. Here is mine, and we're having a bite, and then we're toasting, so. Exactly. Yeah. This, okay. This, this is how you would do it? This is how we would do it. That's, this is how we do it. So welcome to Sweden. Welcome thank to you, Sweden. Thank you so much. Enjoy. Enjoy. Mm. I don't know if I got much of the fish in that bite. <laughs> it's nice. No, I've got it because it's very salty. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. It's good. Yeah. Cheers. That's how we say it in Swedish. It's good. It's good. So what do you think? It's good. I'm going to go in for another bite. Like almost any traditional strong-smelling food, surströming tastes better than it smells, although it's still very strong and salty. And it's best eaten in late summer, right when the year's catch is done fermenting. In fact, it actually used to be a royal decree that you couldn't eat surströming before the third Thursday in August. That law was lifted, but the tradition of the surströming premiere continues. Is there a reason you eat it in summer? You have to be outside. You have to be outside. Mistakes have been made. <laughs> Opening the, the can inside, eating it inside, and, and that, you're going to need to make a total makeover of your home because the smell is really intense. And that is why we're on the back patio yes, right now. It is. Yes, yeah. We ended up attracting a real crowd from around the ambassador's residence of seasoned surströming veterans and newbies mm. alike. It's pretty good. It actually does not taste as bad as it smells. We'd like to thank Ambassador Olaf's daughter and her team, because being based in DC is really cool sometimes, for helping us understand this corner of the world of cuisine. You know, I really like pickles and I like kimchi and I think I actually really like surf drumming. We got to see the actual ambassador's residence, which was gorgeous. And we got to spend some time and eat cookies with our lovely, lovely hosts. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks also to YouTube user Matthias Bengtsen for requesting surf drumming as a video topic. Tell us what unusual foods you can't live without and maybe we'll barge into some ambassador's backyard and try them. And if you want to support us in our unusual and extremely satisfying life choices, make sure to like, subscribe, share, and turn on notifications, because I get to try new foods that way and make weird faces, and everyone in the office gets to laugh at me because they're really nice. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs>